Uh, welcome to a new video and in this video I want to talk about the Photo Pro app, the new Photo Pro app from the One Mark 3 and the 5 Mark 3. And this one I showed you already in a previous video but it was like extracted from some information that I saw on other videos. But now I can give you a hands-on with this new camera application because someone extracted it from the One Mark 3 and I have now the APK running on the 5 Mark II and as you can see here this is the new Photo Pro in the basic mode. So let's get started and take a look around the software. So what we can see here is the basic interface of the basic mode. As you can see here on the top left we have the option to switch to the normal auto mode or P or S, M and MR mode. So these are the settings that you had already on the 1 Mark II and the 5 Mark II. And if I go to the basic mode we have several options here. You can see I can switch between the aspect ratio very quickly. I have various different aspect ratios that I can switch to. And uh, then I have the flash options here where I can set up uh, torchlight or eye flash or automatic flash or no flash at all. I can set the uh, shooting here like uh, low high speed shooting uh, so burst shooting or a timer as well which is nice. I have the option to go into the bokeh mode have to hit the bokeh option and then I can set up here the bokeh that I want to have. And I have the, of course the option to set up the uh, yeah, color temperature and the brightness as well here. And I can of course reset this. Then I have here the option to switch between the different camera uh, modes like the 2.9. As you can see I get a nice little slider to zoom in even more. And the same goes for the ultra wide. You can see it's pretty quickly in switching even. I think it's a bit quicker than the normal application even when it comes to switching the cameras. So this is pretty nice and you can see here I have the option to switch from photo to video mode and here I also have the option to uh, go in and zoom in but if I hit the record button you can see those other buttons disappear and I can only crop in digitally to this uh, one sensor that I'm recording with. And I also have the HDR mode that I can use here for recording. I can activate the torchlight if I want to and I can also play around with the temperatures and the brightness as well. And this video mode is improved in comparison to the normal Sony camera application that you usually have on the 5 Mark II because now it allows to externally record via a microphone which was only possible via the Cinema Pro app and I will show you this right now by just simply using the 5 Mark II's new Camera Pro app in video mode to show you how this will look like. So if you are in video mode you can go to the menu and have some other options just like setting the video size here. You can go to up to 4K only 30 frames per second. Full HD 60 frames per second is also possible and then the one-to-one -one aspect ratio if you want to have or HD. Video stabilization can be enabled. You can choose the format AVC or HEVC. Uh, the torchlight you can activate, wind filter. You can have grid lines activated. You can set the zoom keys, audio signals. Uh, you can set the storage internal or a micro SD card, save the location uh, on or off. A launch uh, with camera key. This is the only option that is currently not working on the 5 Mark II or the 1 Mark II with this extracted APK from the 5 Mark III or the 1 Mark III. So you're not allowed or not cannot use the camera button here to, to launch this new camera application, the new Photo Pro application. And you have some other options here as well as you can see here. So these are the video options. Of course there are some uh, photo options as well. You can go to the menu and have uh, the simple uh, option here as well for photos and you can see it's the basic mode uh, face AA, uh, IAF QR reader. What is not working here I think is the uh, option to follow some uh, subject or something that you clicked on which is not possible with this because it's simply the hardware missing here. So these are the options of the Photo Pro, of the new Photo Pro app of the Sony Xperia devices. So now this is a video recording with the new Photo Pro app on the Xperia 5 Mark II. 
the extracted APK from the 5 Mark III or the 1 Mark III and this is the video mode that you can get from the Photo Pro in basic mode where it allows you to shoot videos. In the advanced modes of course there's no video mode, you have the same settings and the same options as on the 5 Mark II and the 1 Mark II. And this video mode is I think pretty good. I can use my external microphone. You can see this is plugged in to my wireless microphone system, the Sony ECM uh, W2BT and I have my LAV Mic 1 from Sony ECM LAV Mic 1, I think it's called, uh, also plugged in. It's a bit of windy here, maybe you get some wind noises, but it has of course the wind filter enabled as well, so maybe this filtering out a little bit at least. How do you think is this video looking like? What about stabilization? I'm recording this in 1080p, 30 frames per second, just like the other videos, simply because I don't want to uh, cut so much and have so big large files to upload to YouTube later on. What you cannot do in video mode is switch the camera on the fly while recording, but what you can do is of course stop the recording and then go to another video mode. This is what we want to do right now. So this is now the super wide angle camera, you can see much more and you can see also it is a bit brighter I think in the background. I'm not using the HDR option for recording right now, I'm just using the normal option. If I turn around maybe it is I think a bit better. Um, it's a bit of a cloudy day, it was sunny just a few minutes ago but now it is getting a bit darker and there should be rain coming later in an hour or so. Uh, so this is stabilization that you can get with the ultra wide on the new photo pro basic mode and I think it pre looks pretty nice. I like the stabilization because I think it is even a tiny bit better than the normal stabilization that you got on the Sony camera default app on the 5 Mark II and the 1 Mark II. So I think this might be really a vlogger's dream. Sony did it and Sony listened to me Finally we have external microphone support and a good stabilization and auto exposure is also working which is pretty nice so this is a vlogger's dream I would say. Sony is now up to the game with other camera manufacturers like Xiaomi or Huawei. The only thing that is missing a little bit is HDR high dynamic range in the default mode but let's try out HDR mode and see how this will look like. And now I'm using the HDR mode and I think the sun is coming out a little bit through the sky and uh, yeah, through the clouds I think. And uh, yeah, this is the HDR mode. Do you see any difference? Um, I will also check out if the file uses some HLG HDR stuff that is hard to edit or is like baking it into the file correctly, the HDR mode, so you don't have to have issues in post-production with the colors and uh, yeah, have to do some color profiling or something like this. So this is the HDR mode. This is on the main camera. So I switch back to the main camera as you can see. I think the main camera would be uh, with a selfie stick or with a little tripod that you have, I think the best for vlogging. Even though the wider field of view I also like pretty much, it depends on what kind of vlog you want to make. And I think this one is also pretty nice for vlogging because you get this shallow depth of field as well. So what do you think about the Xperia 5 Mark II running with the new Photo Pro basic application? You can write it down in the comment section. I will now take some photographs as well to show you in the basic mode how photos will end up looking on the Xperia 5 Mark II with the new Photo Pro app. So let's get started and take a look at this. Let's start looking at the photos and this is the first photo, super wide angle, so ignore this little finger that I have here while uh, shooting. Uh, let's take a look. These photos were all shot in the basic mode of the Photo Pro app, so I did not go into the normal mode because I guess it is basically the same that the 5 Mark II and 1 Mark II have. You can see good sharpness overall on this flower uh, for wide angle lens. You can see a little bit of, yeah, strange bokeh in the background a little bit here as you can see here but in general I think it's a good photo. Now the next photo this is taken with the main lens and that shows 5 Mark II and 1 Mark II have a great great main lens and I think with some improvements you will see the same on the uh, 1 Mark III and 5 Mark III but you can see how great it is. You have the shallow depth of field. Even these flowers in the foregrounds are, uh, the, the, this little uh, petals here in the foregrounds are 
a little bit unsharp and the background is a little bit more sharp because I was focusing here on the background. So it shows what you can get, almost DSLR-like quality, also the bokeh, natural blur blurry background, very very cool indeed. Then another shot to test out the zoom capabilities. Uh, this is, I think, uh, this is one time. This is then the 2.9 time that is written or shown there. And then I was zooming in five times. And you can see here, uh, let's go back to the one time zoom and let's go to the 100% view. You can see it's, I think it is a bit of a sharpening going on here because this wasn't so sharp here. And can we read anything here? Oh, I don't think so. Anyway, then we have the 2.9 times and you can still read here. It's a bit unsharp as you can see here. The sign is not sharp. I was focusing on this sign. Then we go to the uh, five times. This is like uh, digital zooming in onto the 2.9 times sensor. And here you can see, yeah, it is still a bit soft in this regard, but it's bigger and you can see also in this not 100% view, it looks better than this. Uh, you can see also the color shift a bit, so it's getting a bit darker. And now we come to eight times zoom because this is the maximum that you can get. And I think it still looks good. If I zoom in here, you can see, ooh, not so. But if I take a look at the eight times zoom, it gets even a little bit darker here, but I think it still looks good. So they are doing some sharpening, obviously, um, but it is still good. If I go to 100% view, you can see it is still a bit soft and you can see here smudges and so on where the sharpening is going on, but still I think pretty good. And then just for the fun of it, this is the ultra wide shot where you can see how far away I actually was. And if I go in here 100%, you can see, yeah, the ultra wide angle uh, is not the sharpest in this regard, but you can still read the sign here. Then the next shot I wanted to try out, yeah, what's, how about uh, photographing against the sky or with the sky? Is it doing HDR? Is it, because this was always a critique of the normal Sony camera app and I can tell you, yes, finally, we have auto HDR here. So if it detects like a, a big scene difference, it is doing HDR here and it is working fine. It doesn't take like few seconds or something like this to fuse together the photo. You just take the photo the photo might look a bit underexposed on the viewfinder itself, but if you go into the uh, photo itself, this is the end result. So it is like this was clearly underexposed when I was taking the shot, but here you can see perfectly. So it is doing some HDR. And here also again against the sky. This was totally black when I was photographing against the sky and you can see here I can see the green leaves or the green, uh, the green in the trees. Then the next thing I um, wanted to try out with natural bokeh again, but this case, this is the zoom camera that I'm using here right now to zoom in to, I think it was zooming in here. You can see the zoom camera is slightly out of focus, not out of focus, I would say slightly unsharper than the normal main camera, uh, where it doesn't get so much of this sharpness in here, but very nice bokeh indeed. And you can see the HDR effect again. It is a bit blown out in the background, but it is acceptable. You can see it is not completely white. You can see the blue in the sky as well. And uh, another shot again from the other side of the football field here, this little uh, one again, HDR working fine. You can see the grass is, um, the colors are good, I would say. You can see the clouds are coming and going. And the next one is a shot with the ultra wide angle. I just wanted to do, see if the ultra wide angle also has good HDR. You can see the blue in the sky, so it is not overexposing the sky. So also here, the ultra wide angle has good HDR. And you can see you can have a little bit fun with the ultra wide angle where the foreground is blurry, the background is blurry, and here it is sharp. You can see it is a bit over sharpened again. And I think that the sharpness of the ultra wide angle in general is not perfect on the 5 Mark II, but it is a very nice shot that you can get out of here indeed. And then I also tried some selfies. In this case, it is exposing correctly to my face, as you can see here, with the front facing camera. And uh, it's trying maybe to do some HDR, but you can see the sky is overblown here, definitely. Here it is better if I'm uh, just turned around 
and the sun is now uh, facing me you can see blue sky and a nice face here also i think it is sharp enough and the background has a little bit of blur it is not using the portrait mode it is just using the normal selfie cam so the selfie cam i would say it is a slightly bit improved in uh, my opinion in terms of hdr effect then again experimenting with hdr the sun was out here was photographing here the sun was like shining through the dark clouds and you can still see the foreground it's a bit darker but it's still doing a good job and you can see the hdr effect kicking in and here again directly into the sun you can see the sun flare here so the size coding cannot help uh, much but you can see clearly the leaves the green leaves here so it is doing a nice little job and here also directly sh shooting in the sun you can see that it's getting a bit darker on the sides here the cloud was also a bit dark but you can see the blue sky so it HDR effect is working fine. Then I tried out the ultra wide angle uh, camera on the back for yeah uh, taking a selfie and uh, yeah I look a bit crazy. Uh, anyway it was working fine and the main camera as well as you can see here directly again to the sun you can see a bit sun flare here my face is uh, good exposed and as you can see here on my fingers that the sun was really directly behind me so it is um, doing a good job I think in HDR in uh, regards to photos and uh, here another one um, with the normal one with again against the sun as you can see here and I think this one is even better than this one uh, because here it has had to really heavily work on it but here it looks a bit better and then another shot this time around with the and this is like so fantastic you can get almost macro like shots if i go to 100 percent ah, ah not really 100 percent sharp the reason why is i was using the main camera and i tried one of the new sliders where you can manually zoom in on the main camera to get even more information on the main shot i didn't get this hairs on of this little flower but when i used the zoom i could really see it and in this case i think if you don't zoom in 100 percent where you see it's falling apart it's looking really fantastic and another shot to try out hdr again the sun came out and you can see the building clearly in the background hdr is working fine and here again with the zoom lens as well then a dog came by passed by i used the zoom lens. he was like a bit shy the dog so if i put my camera up he was like hmm? looking weirdly and didn't want to come closer so i had to put the uh quickly uh quick shot with the zoom tele lens and you can see it worked he's fairly sharp i would say and he's moving um towards me but did not want to come closer uh, this time around i tried the bokeh mode here and as you can see here yeah it is a fake bokeh mode um so it has the tree sharp or the, the rest of the tree sharp you can see the foreground here those little flowers also sharp and the background is blurred i can see here a little bit of the effect so that is like artificially done and i just wanted to play around it this is i think the the mid setting so the the, the setting in the middle you can go even higher bokeh just really crazy or lower bokeh in this case i did the let it at the middle and i think it is looking pretty good but it's clearly not optimized uh, for objects it is more optimized for uh, subjects or so for people then again hdr shot works fine nicely here's another shot with the fake background blur uh, using the main cam photographing my sony xperia uh, 1 mark 2 which i used for the intro for the first video and as you can see here edge detection worked, worked much uh, better here also my fingers are in focus and the rest is out of focus and this is not a background blur that you can get uh, usually from the um, main camera you have to get a lot closer if you want to do it and you can see me taking the shot in the reflection as well so this is pretty nice uh, so if you have s such squared object it's working fine and here is the bokeh mode uh, with a person and i think here it shines really to get i think now i i a little bit overdid it here with the bokeh i did uh, put the slider really really up and you can see this fake bokeh i'm gonna uh, it like it looks too artificial but you can see it did pretty good job with my hair 
um, uh, maybe here a little bit this one hair strain I think is blurry it shouldn't be blurry but it did a pretty good job of the person of, of me and this all you have to rem uh, keep in mind with the back main camera that doesn't have a 3D time of flight sensor like the Xperia 1 Mark II where it probably would uh, do an even better job so it looks pretty nice then another shot, macro shot, I wanted to go to this flower, this is the main camera, I can go 100%, this looks like this, but I can also use the zoom again, and this is what I did, and you can see the colors are slightly changing, but if I go here, you can see, I can see the hair, but it is like a bit unsharp, and if I have the zoom one, you can see it's pulling out a little bit more of information in the hair here, if I zoom in 100%, eh, it's falling apart because it's a digital crop, but if I go into this, I get a better picture than just cropping in here in this picture um, I have to say so yeah this is pretty nicely done uh, Sony did some improvements here that also uh, work on the 5 Mark II then another shot here I tried again the zoom uh, try to uh, have like uh, all the different zooms this is I think, the main lens you can see uh, it's doing a pretty good job this is the main lens zoomed in to 2.9 and as you can see here, oof, yeah, a bit rough, unsharp. This is the shot 2.9 with the 2.9 lens. I can see it is directly, it can see the color shift. It is a little bit cooler. And if you zoom in, it's a lot sharper, of course. Then this shot five times zoomed in with the tele lens on the Xperia 5 Mark II. You can see here, it's getting a bit unsharp, but you can still see the details, like the, all the cables on this. Uh, I think it is a GSM 3G LTE uh, station here, um, antenna, and this all the way zoomed in eight times, and I can zoom in a little bit more, but here you can see it's falling apart, this is not really usable. And then this, just for the sake of it, the ultra wide angle, uh, in the ultra widest mode, and then, uh, let's see here, the, uh, I think again blue sky it's working nicely here and this is the ultra wide angle zoomed in to one times um, don't use it just use the one time camera and uh, that's it this is it basically so in general i'm uh, pretty impressed by the new hdr look it, it's it's miles ahead of what the sony application was doing by default you had to go i think in manual mode and to activate hdr i think it was on the 10 mark ii i'm not sure even if you can do it on the uh, 5 mark ii in the normal sony application that you can activate hdr there manually uh, anymore um, at least yeah this it never worked for me quite as well as the photo pro app in basic mode is working you can write down in the comment section what you think about the photos i think it is really really good and of course you can also have a selfie video with the basic application of the photo pro or the basic mode of the photo pro app and this is now recorded without a selfie stick just right now you don't have like autofocus but auto exposure is there i think high dynamic range is not there and you don't have the high dynamic range option for the selfie cam because probably it is a bit too bad for this but in general i think the photo quality and the video quality of the selfie cam is also okayish and it can be also used for vlogging if you want to see yourself in the viewfinder or in the, on the screen itself. Uh, this is also using the external audio that I have here plugged in uh, wirelessly to the uh, Xperia 5 Mark II. So this is also working pretty nicely. So this is everything of this video of the new Photo Pro basic mode running on the Xperia 5 Mark II and 1 Mark II. Some of you will ask now, hey I want to try it out as well I want to have this new cool camera application where do I get it I will put down a link in the comment section and there will be also a link in the reddit thread that uh, pointed me towards this um, yeah, APK that you can try out it is originally hosted on a Chinese server where you need like a Chinese phone number to be able to download anything so I asked a friend who lives in China has a Chinese phone number and downloaded the APK for me and then I re-uploaded to one of my um, cloud services and uh, you can download it from there and you can try it out 
The only thing that you need to take a look and take care of is like before you do this, uh, go into your Android app settings, go to the Photo Pro app, Photo Photography Pro app, I think it is called there, and then clear the cache, delete all the data of your previous Photo Pro application, and then install the application and run the application. If you don't like the application or encounter any problems, you can always uninstall the application as well. Just go and uninstall the update for the application and it will restore the normal Photo Pro application for you without any issues. I tried this out as well. So this is everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. You can give it a thumbs up. You can hit the like button. You can subscribe even if you want to have more Sony content. Sony with safer shares, for example, Sony rumors, Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, 5 Mark II tests, and of course uh, rumors and uh, 5 Mark III and 1 Mark III and maybe 10 Mark III stuff you can always see in my channel. And if you're interested in Huawei phones, for example, you can also have a look there. So that's basically everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, bye.